Hello, and welcome to our noon mass here at St. James Cathedral Basilica. Today, we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Innocents and Martyrs. We now invite you to rise and join in greeting our celebrant, Father Fauci, with our opening hymn, number 509, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly, number 509. and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, 
whom the holy innocents confess and proclaimed on this day, not by speaking, but by dying. Grant, we pray, that the faith in you which we confess with our lips may also speak through our manner of life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, this is the message that we have heard from Jesus Christ and proclaimed to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we continue to walk in darkness, we lie and do not act in truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of his son Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we acknowledge our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one, he is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The word of the Lord. have swept over us, over us then would have swept the raging waters. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Broken was the snare and we were free. heaven. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the Magi. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, and she would not be consoled, since they were no more. The Gospel of the Lord. Here we are, not long after Jesus' birth, and we encounter sort of a dark story, don't we? It doesn't exactly feel as bright and cheery as Christmas was. And St. Joseph, we see, is warned in a dream to get out because King Herod wanted to kill Jesus. Now, of course, all of this goes back to jealousy. How often are we struck down by jealousy in our own lives. It happens to the best of us. And he was jealous because he saw Jesus as a threat. He thought that the Messiah would become this very powerful uh, political ruler. And he wasn't having any of that. So the easiest way for him to just end it all would have been to get rid of Jesus. And how do you do that? Well, it'd be a little difficult to necessarily find him, so he was going to wipe out every young boy in the local land. Now you have to think for a moment about this journey that the Holy Family took. It was a long journey. They had done an awful lot leading up to this point. They had to make their way to Bethlehem so that Mary could find a place to give birth to Jesus. And of course, once he was born, it wasn't necessarily a restful time. So many visitors came to be with our Lord, to see him, to kneel down before him, to bring gifts. The Magi, the shepherds, and so on. So finally, once St. Joseph has just a moment to sit back, to rest peacefully, to doze off and to sleep, he has this dream. And I think most people would have brushed it off, paid it no attention, considered it to be just a dream as it was, and that's it. But Joseph was different. Joseph was faithful. He trusted God, and he obeyed him. And he immediately goes he leaves his comfort zone, this area that he knows so well, this region, and he goes and becomes a refugee in a foreign country. What an example, really, for all of us, for you and I, to be able to find, really, an example in St. Joseph. Because how many times do we struggle in our faith? How many times do we struggle in our trust, our trust in God? Because it's tough at times to really sit back and to say, God, you take control, you take over, you take the lead, lead me where you will. But that's what we need to pray for each and every day. That's where we need to go when we go to the Lord, when we get down on our knees, when we sit before him in prayer, be it 
here in this cathedral basilica, be it in our own parish church, be it from the comforts of our own home. Go to God. Trust as Joseph did. Let us be silent as St. Joseph was as well, always listening for the voice of the Lord, not always saying much, but listening to what God had to offer him. So today let's ask ourselves, where are we willing to go if God asks us? What are we willing to do? It will be difficult. There will be challenges. But often it means leaving a lot of things behind. But he never leaves us alone. He walks beside us each and every step of the way. Please stand. With great hope, let us bring our joys and our sorrows to the Father of mercy. For the church, may the Holy Spirit empower us in comforting those who weep and bringing hope to those in darkness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may God's wisdom fill them with respect for the dignity of all life, regardless of age, race, culture, or social status. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of violence or hatred, may God grant them strength and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our midst, in need of material or spiritual help, may the Lord have mercy and provide for their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may God welcome them into the eternal joy of heaven with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Shariah Karnati, for whom this Mass is offered, may God welcome them into the eternal joy of heaven with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for those intentions we hold this day in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and power, we bring you our needs, our joys, and our sorrows this day. Hear our prayers and answer them in your divine mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your devoted servants, and purify us as we faithfully serve these, your mysteries, by which you grant justification even to those who lack understanding through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. join in singing our communion hymn number 498 it came upon a midnight clear number 498 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, abundant salvation to your faithful as they receive your holy gift on the feast day of these, your servants, who, though still unable to profess your Son in speech, were crowned with heavenly grace on account of his birth, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks. Thanks be to God. We invite you to join in singing our recessional hymn, number 503, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, number 503. Thank you. 